My background is pretty much the life of baseball. So I uh, was very fortunate and I started playing over in the States when I was quite young. Then moved to England when I was nine and fortunately found a club in Tunbridge of all places. Managed to keep playing, got involved with the Great Britain national team, at which point I then set my sights a little bit higher and thought, what's next? And so I looked at my options and ended up playing college baseball over in the States. Went to university for four years, played there, had best time of my life playing baseball every single day in the California sunshine. Then when I graduated, I was looking for options and seeing what might come up, and then that triggered a move back to the UK. I took a job with Baseball Softball UK as a regional coach up in the Midlands. Through that, I got much more heavily involved in the British baseball scene, again, with the national teams. Still playing a little bit. I was very fortunate to play in the World Cup. I had some time in Germany, and then I have stayed on, and I continue to work for Baseball Softball UK, but I've moved up through the, the coaching rankings to now be the head coach of the Under-19 team. Through some of those connections, and again, people in the baseball world who started working to cricket, uh, I actually got an opportunity to then end up working with the Irish cricket team as part of their preparations for the 2011 World Cup in India and then also the T20 following in Sri Lanka. And so I was very fortunate in that I was able to take all these years of baseball experience and actually end up applying them to professional cricket and seeing that sport at the really the highest level in the world. All right, fellas, have some fun right now. Yeah, we're going to practice doing something we don't get to practice a whole lot and that is hitting the ball as hard as we can. Sound like fun? Okay, all I need from you is one thing. Unload on it. Here we go. That's it. Not bad. Not a boy, it's a good hack. Right there. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, man. Give me some. In baseball, it's one swing. This ball's coming in, and I am trying to hit it as hard and as far as I can. There are a couple times we have a slightly different approach, but we're talking minuscule changes where, okay, well, I just want to hit it to this side as opposed to this side. But if he throws it to me here, I'm still going to hit it as hard as I can. Whereas cricket, there's a um, much more in-depth process that needs to go in terms of assessing, first off, where are the fielders, what type of delivery, where is the ball pitched, you know, where is my front foot going to go, am I moving my back foot? So all those things, that, that, that process that the batsman goes through, it's just, it's another thing to think about. Most of the time when we think about a baseball swing, it's people think about it just come playing across the ball, yeah? What we find when we look at the highest level players, we look at players in the major leagues in the States and we look at some of the top T20 players, particularly a guy like Chris Gale, when you are hitting a ball somewhere between knee and shin height, and in baseball, when we have to hit a ball that is knee height, our position is exactly the same. In order for me to go out and get that ball, I can't be rotational. I can't just come here because I'm going to swing right over the top of it. So what we'll notice is the head, the belly button, the feet, and the hands operate in the exact same way. The only difference is my hands are here to here. Cricket, we're here, but it's the same. My hands are going to be in the same position. It's just my starting point. What we'll then notice is that point of contact. So we reference that ball that's here, somewhere between knee and shin height. I can get here. And it's that exact same position. And the key things here, fellas, are a stiff front leg, this back L here, because my hips have rotated, and my hand position with my head behind the ball. This is exactly the same. Can I switch out there? If I start here, and I now have to play through this ball straight, if I come here, that is exactly the same. There's no difference. More? It's a little bit bigger step. Feel that? Now let your hips go. There you go, you feel that tension? Yeah, right here, right here. That's where I want you to go, okay? Feel that tension, and then we're gonna go for it. All right, yeah, let's see it. There it is. Don't come out and around. I want you to come straight to the ball. So here, and I'm gonna make contact right there. Okay, I'm gonna come through. I'm gonna try and keep my hands between me and the cricket ball. Try and take your hands right to that gray nickel sign, right there. Better. Swing like you mean it, yeah? Let's go. Yes, there it is. But as far as your prototypical world-class or, or county-level batsman who's thinking about how can I get my edge, it's another tool that they can add. And they have so many different shots and so many different approaches for different points in the game and different bowls that they face. For me, I don't think there's any reason why they can't then just take another one, it's in their back pocket. This is by no means designed to change the cricket swing. They're, they're, you know, that, that's perfect. But it's when you get that moment, when that bowler makes a mistake, pitches a little bit up and you have a chance to really unload on it, or the timing of the game means, hey, we, we gotta get things going, we need some runs. Right, fellas, we're gonna take what we did in the cage and put it out on the field, us versus them, yeah? Our goal is to hit this ball as far as we can. 
you are going to get points for every cone you hit it past. It's where the ball bounces first. First line of cones is five, second, 10, third, 15. If you hit it outside of the cones, no points. If they catch it, no points. There you go. Oh, five points. There we go. Boy. Hey, good effort. That's all right. That's all right. There it is. Another five. Good swing. There it is. Five points. What I want to cover real quick is two things. Grip and then our, our arm circle and arm position. Whenever we make a throw, whether it's in close or from the boundary, what we want to do is try and grip the ball across the seams. What we're looking for is rotation on the ball 12 to 6 o'clock, as if it's 12 to 6 on a clock face. When we have this, the ball is going to fly true and straight. If you throw it here, what's going to happen? Yeah, just like a swing bowler, right? And when we're trying to hit the stumps, that's not going to help us. So whenever we pick up a ball, it doesn't matter if we're close or on the boundary, we're always going to get here. In baseball, um, fielding is it's just a given. If you can't catch, if you can't field, then you can't play. There's no room allowed for anyone that isn't able, able to play. And the expectation is we're going to be perfect every single time. Perfect throwing position, fellas. We want to be in a good, wide, athletic base. Our back arm, our elbow is going to be around about 90 degrees. You can be a little bit lower, you can be a little bit higher, but around about 90 degrees. This ball here needs to be facing, not towards, not away, but somewhere in between. In baseball, we throw every day. If we practice six days a week, we're throwing six days a week. And of that practice, if we practice for, say, two, two and a half hours, we've got 20 minutes where we're just warming our arms up. So we spend 20 minutes every day just looking after our arms, getting it stronger, making sure it's healthy, and then we'll have anything from half an hour to 40 minutes of fielding practice. Whereas in cricket, and this is mostly because of the emphasis on uh, test match cricket, there's much more of a heavy emphasis on the time spent in the nets for the batsmen and the bowlers. Throwing progression, fellas. If we get in our partners, let's have one partner on this line and then the other partner on this line between the cones. What we're going to do is everyone's going to get down on a knee. This is a good athletic position. When we throw here, fellas, we're just going to work on that arm circle. Same as we talked about, we're going to get into a good throwing position right here and then we're just going to throw to our partner. We're trying to hit them in the chest. Ready, go. Good. When you throw, I want to see really good 12-6 rotation. So when you throw, your finger's going to be on top of the ball. Your finger's going to finish right here. You should be able to see the rotation on the ball spinning between 12 and 6 o'clock. If you don't have that, you need to get your fingers more on top of the ball. All right? This arm circle. The way we're going to do this, two steps. Step one is you're going to get to a good throwing position. You're going to stop right here, and you're going to check. You're going to check your arm is at 90. You're going to check this ball is facing somewhere about 90 degrees away from you. So it's not here and it's not here. Does that make sense? So we're going to get here, I'm going to check it, and then I'm going to redo it again. Good. a boy, very good. Right, now what you're going to do is you're going to come back, get your arm circle ready, check it, check, look back, good. Now reset, so take your arm forwards, and now throw in one motion. There we go, perfect. Biggest mistake most throwers make is you think all the energy comes from your arms. Mostly comes from your legs, your hips, and your back. How we're going to work on this is we're going to get extended. So every time I throw, I want to finish so that my chest is out over my front side. Your goal is when you throw, you're going to finish with your fingers on the outside part of your shoe. This is going to help me get good extension. So when I throw, when I come through, I should finish right here. This gets my chest over my front side. This is going to transfer energy from my legs into my back, into my throat. You've got that logo on the outside, you want to try and get those fingers here. Same with you, you've got that Nike tick on the outside, want to make sure that we get out here, yeah? Get good extension. All right, here we go. Good. There you go. So I'm going to take that first step right under my chin with that ankle, try and point my ankle right at my partner. Right, left, throw. Make sense? Free and easy, fellas. We're not throwing too hard. Still trying to hit our partner in the chest. Back it up after every throw. So we're going to throw from different angles. What this means, and I want to be crystal clear on this, it's not an excuse to throw from here. This is not a good throwing position. What I mean by angles is I'm going to bend my knees and my hips so I can now protect this angle and I can throw from here or I can throw from here or hell, I can even throw from down here if I want to. 
Nice throw, man. Nice throw. We're going to try and get all the way back to this last set of cones. Those of you guys who have pretty good throwing arms right now, that's where I want you to aspire to. Our footwork right here. So once we've got the ball, we're going to go left, right, left, and throw. And we're looking for that extension. And you'll notice how much I use my back leg. When I throw here, fellas, left, right, left, and throw, my back leg is going to come up. I'm going to try and get my chest over my front side. One more for you. Notice how flat my chest, how parallel it gets to the ground. Left, right, left, and throw. Every coach has different philosophies, but I think having sp spent some time with some of the top Major League Baseball pitching coaches, who are their biggest concern right now is injury prevention. You know, they've cracked velocity. It's extraordinary. We were at a point you know, 10 years ago where we would say, wow, 93, that, that's pretty fast. Now it's, if you don't throw 96, then there's not going to be a lot of jobs for you. So they've got velocity down. They understand that. Now it's about arm care. And the biggest thing at the moment is making sure that we don't get too much over rotation and making sure that that's in a good position. Show me what you got. There it is. I like it. Now we're starting to throw. Look at that. Look how much more power you got in that throw. That baby. That a boy. Get some height on it. Really extend. Get some extension. Use those legs. That a boy. Now we're talking. What is the difference getting a guy out on the stumps and him being in? How much time do you think we're talking about? Seconds. seconds, less than seconds. Like we're talking about half seconds. We're trying to save as much time as possible. The ways that we can save time, we can have great arms. We can have absolutely fantastic throwing arms. And we can have accurate arms. But if we don't have quick arms, none of that matters. So the footwork that I want you to work on is we're going to take our back foot. Everyone's right handed. This is going to be simple for us, OK? Back foot is going to go right underneath our chin. Two steps. I want to see it as quick as we can. Ready, go. Good. Just like when we started. When we first started backing it up, our throw was here. Right, left, throw. Same thing. Only this time, we're going to stay low. We're not going to stand all the way up. If I waste time coming up, A, my energy is going this way when I want the ball to go this way, and B, I've wasted all that time fielders who are inside the circle to middle infielders in baseball. Those are the guys who have to make the play bang bang, where you have no time. If you compare them to outfielders, which is what we would expect outfielders to do in cricket as well, they always, they get tall, they get set, they have a good throw. Catchers who are throwing from home to second, same thing. They're going to receive the ball because it's thrown to them at a reasonable height. They can then set their feet and throw over the top. Perfect. Middle infielders, however, especially if they have to turn a double play, they're having to field a ball off the ground, and then they're often having to throw it in multiple different directions. They may have to take a back pivot and throw. They may have to move to their left and spin the other way and throw. And all these different movement patterns mean that if I take the time to then stand up and get in the perfect throwing position, A, it takes time, and B, I'm trying to move the ball in different directions, and the first thing I've done is my energy's gone this way. Everything we worked on in terms of throwing from different angles and throwing down low, we're going to put into this drill right now. Our fielder is going to come back here to point. What you're going to do is the first part of the drill is you're going to get a ball rolled from me down by the keeper's end. You're going to attack the ball. You're going to handle it cleanly. We're going to make a good sharp throw. Our goal, fellas, is we want a direct hit. For me, that's what gets us run outs. Good effort. Next guy. Let's go. Come on. Hit it. That a ball. That boy. Hit it. That a baby! That a boy right there! That a boy! It's our first direct hit right there. Hey, we go one more time through. I want to see pace. We're a little bit slow getting to our feet. Test yourself right now. Get rid of it! Hey, great effort! Oh, there it is! Two for two! So for me, what I try and encourage our athletes to do is to use the energy they have already in their legs. If you field the ball, you are in a strong athletic position. What I try and get them to do is avoid standing up and focus on keeping their head down, lining up their shoulders, lining up their feet to, to the target so they can get rid of it. That a baby! Last throw we're going to do today. Picking up the ball from the boundary or close to the boundary, we want to get a nice hard throw back into the field of play. Ideally, we want to get it to the keeper. Fairly big distance right here, fellas. So what I want us to avoid is too high a throw. We need to get a nice, sharp throw in, something that's between head and a little bit higher in height. 
I would say the best arms that I've seen in cricket at the World Cup, the one I got to sample, the very best arms in the world, I would say they got up to 80 to 85 max. And we're talking about a handful of guys. We're talking three or four. Observing the opposition um, and some of our own players just that, hmm, okay, that's a, that's a pretty good arm. Three, that was it, at 85. That's, that's not enough to, you might sign a contract, to not even make it all the way up to the top. We're talking about you might sign a contract, someone may take a risk on you. <laughs> there it is! End on that one. Yes, great job today.